So thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, it's different for girls. Um, I want to talk about uh, why CTD is a different condition in girls and also to uh, address some questions that are important in the care for uh, girls with CTD. Um, well, I'm actually curious how many of you realize that there are actually more uh, women that, are, uh, that have a mutation in the creatine transporter gene than there are males, boys with a, a mutation in the creatine transporter. Um, so when we're, we're talking about CTD, we're usually discussing the boys and that this is not fair. Um, well, of course, it is an extinct condition, and uh, so one mutation in the CTD gene, which is located on the X chromosome, will always cause CTD in a, in a boy. And, of course, girls have two X chromosomes, so, uh, yes, that is in advantage because they have a spare one. Uh, but it also means that girls have a higher chance of having a mutation in the CTD gene, simply because they have two copies. And uh, based on this, you would expect to find a CTD mutation in a girl four, four times more frequent than in boys. But importantly, because girls have an extra X chromosome, the, the outcome is also different. <coughs> uh, and well, what's very important in girls is the X inactivation. And the X inactivation means that in girls, in every cell, there's always one X chromosome that is inactivated. So uh, this, this X chromosome is rolled up like a, like a ball of wool and put to the side, and only the other X chromosome is active, and the information from that X chromosome is used. Um, to understand the consequences of X inactivation, um, well, the best way to understand that, I think, is always to look at this, this beautiful kitten. Uh, because the color of the cat is also, uh, uh, well, the, 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 there's a gene for the color of the cat on the X chromosome. So one variant of this gene causes a black coat and another variant of the gene causes a red coat. So if you have this, uh, this red mother cat, she will pass on an X chromosome with the red copy of the gene. And this black father cat will pass on an X chromosome with a black copy of the gene. And from this cell, this beautiful kitten is formed. And th this cell starts dividing and dividing. And when there are 6 to 16 cells, so it's a very early stage, then X inactivation happens. And then in every cell, one X chromosome is switched off. And uh, this can this is coincidental which X chromosome it is. So it can be the red copy, it can be the, the black copy. And this stays the same throughout life. So the X chromosomes that are inactivated stay inactivated during life. So if you have a, a, a cell in which the, the, the black copy is uh, active, then all the cells that come from that will also be black cells. So in the end, this kitten is born and is formed of cells with the, the X chromosome with the red copy active and cells with the X chromosome with the black copy active. And then you have this beautiful skin of coat. Um, what's very important to know is that X inactivation is random. So um, it is uh, either uh, it is in CTD, so either the X chromosome with the, the normal functioning CTD, uh, creatine transporter is active or the X chromosome with the not functioning creatine transporter is active. And in most females, uh, this will be around 50 uh, 50%. So there are mostly as many cells with the normal uh, CT uh, gene active as there are cells with the non-functioning creatine transporter active. But you can be lucky and all the cells, well, you have to be extremely lucky, all the cells are uh, have the, the, the normal copy active and you can be very unlucky and then all the cells have the not functioning uh, transporter active. But what is important that this will turn out differently in every girl. So every girl with a CTD mutation is unique in the amount and also in the distribution of the cells that are functioning, that have a functioning creatine transporter and cells that don't have a functioning creatine transporter. Oh. Um, 
Um, and this also means that curls are unique in the, f in the fact that they have two different cell populations. So all curls are mosaics uh, with cells with a normal functioning creatransporter and cells without a functioning creatransporter. And this is how it will probably look like in, in the brain of a girl with a CTD. Uh, this is actually a picture of another X-linked condition, fragile X. And uh, this is a picture of a, a brain slide from a, a female fetus who's a carrier of fragile X. And you see that the, the cells with a normal functioning gene are colored brown and the other cells are not colored. And you see that there are groups of cells who have the normal gene active and there are also cells without. And I expect it will look similarly in the brain of a girl with CTD, but we don't know. Um, so what does this mean for uh, girls with CTD? Uh, I want to address these four uh, areas, so the diagnosis, the prognosis, and the inheritance and treatment. Uh, now, first of all, the diagnosis is more difficult in girls. And uh, actually, the diagnosis in girls is based on DNA analysis, so the, the finding of a, a pathogenic mutation in the creatine transporter gene. Um, and this is the only reliable test in girls. Uh, we, we have more than once had a question about uh, girls with developmental delay and uh, in which a mutation was found in the creatine transporter gene because, well, now is day for developmental delay. <laughs> Genetic testing is done and then we screen all the genes. Now, they find a mutation in the creatine transporter gene and then uh, the doctors ordered uh, an MRS scan looking at the creatine to confirm the diagnosis and then the results come back normal. And then the question is, does our daughter or does this girl have creatine deficiency or is there another diagnosis? Um, well, the problem lies in the interpretation of the MRS. So um, here, I can, here you can see the, the normal creatine peak. We, we saw that uh, before in other presentations. And in boys, there is a very small creatine peak, so that's clearly abnormal. But in girls, um, uh, there is a, a clear creatine peak present, so sometimes the results can come back as, as normal because there is a creatine peak. But what's important in girls, you will always need a quantitative measurement of the creatine, and then you will usually find a reduced creatine level. Uh, but to make it more complicated, uh, even if the MRS result, also the, nor the quantitative measurements in the MRS are normal, even then it doesn't mean that the, that the DNA result is incorrect. Because we know that uh, a woman with a, a, a mutation in the creatine transporter gene can have normal creatine uh, levels uh, on the MRS. So here you see the, the, the yellow ones are the controls and red dots are females with a creatine transporter mutation and you see that there's overlap. And the blue ones are the, are the boys. Uh, so that does mean that um, if you find a pathogenic mutation in the creatine transporter uh, uh, gene, then the diagnosis is certain. So you know this, this girl will have creatine transporter deficiency in some of her cells. And that's the difficulty of the DNA result. They can't predict if a girl will have symptoms of the condition. So that brings me to the next point. The prognosis is very difficult in girls. Uh, so the lives of a girl with CTD can be very different. So a girl can grow up normally and, and don't know about CTD until she has a son with CTD. And on the other side, there are girls that are at an early age presenting with feeding difficulties or developmental delay or seizures and are diagnosed as what we call patients with creatine transporter deficiency. And uh, importantly, everything between totally asymptomatic and uh, severely symptomatic is possible. And it can also vary between family members. So this is a family that came to our attention because of the youngest daughter uh, who presented with a developmental delay and seizures and was diagnosed with CTD. And then her elder sister, who was doing okay with special education, was also found out to be a carrier, as did the mother who had never been diagnosed with learning difficulties, uh, had attended regular school, 
but told us that, that she always found it very difficult to, to, keep, to keep up uh, on school. And she was in a way relieved to know that, uh, well, like you said, that, 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 uh, that, well, it was really more difficult for her. That, that it was recognized that it was more difficult for her. And she had never, well, she wished she would have had the help that her daughters have nowadays at school. Um, well, of course, this variability is, is, is caused by the, the differences in X inactivation. And um, we don't actually know how many cells are, uh, with, uh, 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 defective cells are needed to, to have symptoms of the, the condition. And of, of course, it is a spectrum. And, and, and we, we, we can't draw a firm line between affected and non infected But just to get some perspective on the frequency of symptoms, I looked at the, the ECD registry. And in the ECD registry, there are uh, 86 uh, boys with creatine transporter deficiency. And as I said in the, in the beginning, you would expect four or times as many girls, but there are only six, if 18 girls in the ACD registry, which means that, well, you would say 16% of the girls are symptomatic and also diagnosed. I think it's also a problem of diagnosis. So there are fewer girls have been diagnosed in the, the last years. Uh, and it's also very important that the other 84 percent of uh, girls, it doesn't mean that they don't have any symptoms or don't face any challenges because they just have milder, they can have milder symptoms that are not recognized and uh, well they can sometimes be struggling and, and left without uh, help. Um, yeah, when a very young child, a girl is diagnosed with creatine transporter deficiency, it's also difficult for the parents because they, they, they face a well, different future, but you don't know how the future will look like. And uh, many parents well, look for more answers to get some prediction of how their, their daughter will develop. And uh, it seems logical to, to look at the, the creatine levels in the brain. And you would expect that the creatine levels in the brain would predict, uh, well, will be related to how many cells are actually affected. Um, but at the moment, we, we still don't know how much creatine is enough. And it also probably depends on how the creatine is, is distributed over the brain. So we, will, we need more MRS scans of girls to, to see if you can make a prediction from the, the creatine levels in the brain about uh, yeah, how the symptoms will develop. So now at the moment, it's still, yeah, you have to look at your daughter, at, your, at, at the girl, how she is doing, and only see, and time will tell. Uh. Uh, well, the inheritance in girls is, uh, well, similarly to boys, uh, girls can inherit a mutation from their mother, who is also a carrier, but it is also possible that a mutation occurs, what we call de novo, newly. So someone is the first in the family with a mutation. And because the girls have two X chromosomes, this is actually more frequent in girls. So girls are more often the first in the family. And this also means that there are women who are carrier of a creatine transporter mutation and don't know this be because it hasn't happened before in their family. Uh, well, as Taylor already mentioned, well, if, if women know that, that, you're, yeah, that you are a carrier, you also face decisions about family planning. So, yeah, there are options as prenatal diagnosis. It's even possible to do pre-implantation genetic testing on which you get pregnant by if, uh, IVF and then the embryos are tested before they are transferred back. Well, there are, of course, also other options as just accepting the chances or deciding not to have your own biological children. But those are all very personal uh, decisions and uh, usually discussed with a clinical geneticist. Well, a few last words on, on treatment in girls. Uh, well, most studies have been done in boys. And well, this is in a way understandable because uh, the condition is so far variable in, in girls that it's very difficult to, to measure a treatment effect in girls. But on the other hand, it is in unfair, and uh, we really should have special attention, I think, for treatment in girls because it can also be, be different. 
And uh, one question is whether creatine supplementation alone could already be effective, have some effect in girls, because you can say, well, there is a creatine transporter uh, left. Um, well, I think this is also difficult uh, looking at this picture because there are cells with a normal creatine transporter, but there are, the other cells are lacking a creatine transporter. So um, we don't know if there will be compensation by the normal cells. Uh, a potential treatment that would only work in girls is to reactivate the, uh, the normal copy of the creatine transporter gene on the inactivated X chromosome. Well, this is, sounds nice, but it's, of course, very difficult because the whole X chromosome is inactivated, uh, and it's not an option at the moment. Uh, well, I also want to remember the boys because boys can sometimes be like girls. And this is the situation when the mutation occurs after the fertilization. So the, in the first cell, there was no mutation, and then the, the cell starts dividing, and then a mutation occurs, and, on, and all the cells coming after that will also have the mutation. And so this boy will have also a, a mosaic of cells with the mutations and cells without the mutation. And this, uh, well, this causes the same challenges in boy uh, regarding the diagnosis and the prognosis and uh, treatment. We've already seen this also. So I want to thank you all for your attention.